Welcome to Fire Breathing Kittens, a standalone actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Every episode, Microplot is a complete adventure with a beginning and end that fits into an overarching macro plot of the whole season. Because they stand sturdily on their own, you can listen to these episodes in any order and can skip any you don't enjoy. Today, we are joined by Claire. Oh, hi. You may recognize me from the last episode you heard where I was the DM. I'm going to try a character voice this season that I've never done before. So I'm going to start out at 0% and I'm going to work my way up to a, a, a 100% at the character voice. <laughs> and We wish you luck. <laughs> thank you. And you it, w- when I undoubtedly fail, my punishment will be to watch more Sofia Vergara, which I can take. I like that. So, um, <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm going to try to emulate. I, I like her a lot. And hey, if I have to watch more Sofia Vergara to get better at this, it's fine. <laughs> so 0% today. Uh, oh, and my character's name is Claire. She's a level two plumber. She's a level two plumber. And and she's a human. She has tan skin and she wishes she looked like Sofia Vergara. <laughs> and Cal. Hello. Cal is a level two HR manager. He... <laughs> <laughs> she loves that. You will never know what our classes are, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) He is with the guild to reinvent their image because, you know, the last few years, pretty much everybody hates the FBK now. (laughs) (laughs) And he has a ultra ego that we will get into if the time ever comes to get into it. But yes, he's a mild mannered level two HR manager and he's a bird person. And Ava. Mild-mannered, you say. Uh, Anyways. So, um, howdy. I'm Avarice H. You can call me Ava if you want. So, um, Avarice is a level two fiend. Um, She is a, uh, she is a Cambian. And she has purple skin. She looks like a dark elf with red eyes and with a large pair of black wings. She wears a cowboy hat. And she just dresses in basically goth cowgirl, fringe jacket, black leather, etc. And she has a golden saber at her waist. Oh, yes. You are all... Uh, and, and a pseudo dragon. Little dragon sits on her shoulder. Little black oh. and... Yeah, Penny. black and purple dragon. It's Penny. <laughs> You are all in the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. The guild is a large building with a bar, a sitting area with wooden tables and chairs, and a wall with a cork board. And there is one job flyer posted, and it's rather shiny. Cal is in the corner, and he has a bunch of people in front of him, and he is doing his HR sexual harassment lecture. Uh, Avarice gets up from the lecture and um <laughs> and just goes over to the goes over to the board. It's just like, hmm, shiny. <laughs> you do know that this is a mandatory lecture, and there is a one hundred and fifty question quiz at the end of it. Oh, I'm I'm listening. It's it's okay. I'm I'm listening and reading. I I can do that at the same time, Kale. So you heard what I just said about the left toe on the left foot. Uh, yeah, left toe on the left foot is is a thing that happens. You shouldn't um you shouldn't step on it. You need to cover it up. That is why they call it the horny toe. <laughs> Keep it covered. Yeah, I guess some people are into left toes. Claire Never just know. walks away from that. <laughs> just <laughs> walks up to that job flyer. Uh, but um, I do a stealth check, so I don't know if you see me. Can uh, I do a stealth check? Yeah, go ahead. Roll. Sweet. Like 24. And I'm just like, oh, yes. yeah, I'm just going to nope out of this. Nope. <laughs> All right. Hand your tests in after you're done taking them to Nusi. And if you pass, then you don't have to come in and redo the class. If you don't, you will have to. Now, uh, Claire, Ava, I need to see you. We're doing your uh, your audit. (laughs) You already did my audit. Yeah, well, you screwed it up. We're doing it again. What are you talking about? (laughs) I became the sheriff of a town. I did great. I did wonderful. And crime rates have dropped, and it has nothing to do with the new torture devices I installed in the jail. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. You just don't that. see Claire. <laughs> yeah, Claire, Claire is like blended. Eva, Claire, let's do this. 
I'm shadowing you. All right, what does the job flyer say to you? <laughs> I was going to say, is anyone going to read the job flyer? Yes. <laughs> so uh, the job... Yeah. Fl- Oh, the job flyer looks to be, when you pick it up, it feels more solid than a piece of paper, and it looks to be stained glass. And on that flyer, in the stained glass that has an image of a dragon in the left-hand corner, it says, Stained Glass Pass. Good for one attempt at the stained glass gauntlet. Your treasured prize awaits. Hmm. Well, gauntlet. This looks fun. I would love to take your your. Test. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. But uh, unfortunately... <laughs> Spanish accent sounds like French. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> no apologies. From now on, I was told that was bad. Uh, I have to go to this uh, stained glass yauntlet. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is a prize. It looks like it could be something worth it to do. You know? There's just not enough crime in that in that town anymore. Would you like to audit me on the Oh, it's already yonkle? started. <laughs> I'm your so, shadow. Uh, do what you gotta do, guys. So as you guys are discussing this, it occurs to you that you've never heard of the stained glass gauntlet. But as that thought occurs to you, you somehow know that it is located in the old purple boot theater. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking of a theater and a purple boot. Claire, do you think that too? Are you thinking something like that? Jess. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Uh, is is this Purple Boot Theater in uh, Nicomoy? Yes. Hmm. Well, that looks about as good a place to start as any. All right. How are you guys going to get there? Just walk? Yeah. Jess. <laughs> I can't fly, I fly, so that's the only thing I do. Yeah, see, Cal's just showing off out here. Because his wings ain't useless. Well, I mean, I'm not trudging through mud again. I learned my lesson. Everest just shakes her head. <laughs> shakes <laughs> head because she can't fly and is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> is is there anything you want to do to prepare for this gauntlet? Uh... <clears throat> I just make sure that all of my uh, auxiliary weapons are stashed in my wings, <laughs> and then I'm ready to use them as a shield. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But my main one just stays on my side. Claire pats down her work pants. She's wearing tan overalls, and they've got really big pockets. She reaches her hand into her right pocket, checks something, and then's like, Jess, I'm ready. <laughs> so... Claire, what, what's, um, you said you were a plumber. I thought I heard you saying that. Um, what's a plumber like you doing in the fire breathing kittens? Everybody needs working toilets. <laughs> hmm. Have you ever thought of being a, a plumber? <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I had to see, I, I saw a lot of, um, stuff, a lot of pipes. I stuffed people in, in pipes too, when I was working down in, in hell, but... I mean, I wouldn't want to do that in the material plane. It's not as, uh, I don't know, not as rewarding. It's not that rewarding there either. It's, it gets it gets tiring after a while. Think she's better than a plumber? <laughs> <laughs> but, Cal, she might be. Plumbing is easy. You just gotta know th- three things. One, shit flows downhill. Two, lunches at noon. Three, don't butt your fingernails. Learning those three things and you can be a plumber, too. Hmm, fair enough. Never I washes her hands. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, as you guys are having that conversation, you're making your way down to where you somehow know Purple Boot Theater is supposed to be, but instead, standing in its place is a towering skyscraper, and it shimmers and rainbows in the sky because it's all made entirely of stained glass. And if you want to roll a perception check, I can tell you a little bit more. Okay. I rolled a... um, 19. 13. 22. Oh, so for Claire... You notice that the 
windows seem to be changing patterns, but you can't quite catch what exact pattern it is, but you can see that it's very beautiful and it keeps rippling across like a pond as it changes. For my other two, you guys notice that there seem to be fight scenes flashing rather quickly across, m intermixed with faces. And in those, on those faces, every time they flash, it either says winner, loser. And occasionally you'll catch a glimpse of what seems like a glimmering pile of prizes across that surface as it ripples and changes. I'm glad you said prizes and not bodies. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, interesting. The front door is right in front of you, so whatever you want to do. Go in. <laughs> Does not knock on door. <laughs> <laughs> so as you walk in, uh, the front entry area has quite a few people in there, and you see a front desk, there's a line, there's a door that flashes green, and every so often a power po a, a party goes through and into that door, so you assume that's where they enter, and standing in front of the current group walking to go in is a man who's rather shiny. His jacket is gold embroidered and it looks like stained glass staying on, you know, on point. He has tan skin, dark hair, and he seems to be talking very animatedly. Who's who's he talking to? He is talking to the group that's at the front of the line. Okay. Mm, I will Oh, yeah. I'll I'll, uh, I'll want to listen in, and if that means cutting a line, I'll do that. <laughs> Cut the line. So as you cut in line, you hear a scoff behind you, and they go, "Of course, it's the fire-breathing kittens. Of course, my boss would have sent me here to the same place these guys would be here because why not?" Why, why not? And then behind that, you hear, it's a fire breathing. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's okay, man. That, <laughs> um, you hear in an old, like, grandma voice um, say, fire breathing kittens. Oh, they were so sweet. They helped my two young charges find love so long ago, but they were wonderful. And then even behind that, you go, oh, Opie would have loved to see the fire-breathing kittens. Too bad he's not here. So you have some people in line that know all of, not you guys in particular, but the guild. Do not worry. Corrective action will be taken after the mission about cutting you in line. Uh, and I turn back and say, yeah, we're FBK. You got a problem with that? Threatening random people in line. <laughs> Um, an older woman steps forward and she has white hair and she looks rather hermit-ish and she goes, no, no, dear. Um, and this is that older woman voice that you heard. Mm. She goes, I'm just so excited to see you here. More competition, the more the merrier. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Do, do any of you know what the prize is going to be? Well, I'm the older woman speaks up again. She, she goes, I am here because... I am here because I like chaos. There's no real explanation. You know, my boys are grown up and they're all married, thanks to you. And it's, and that's such a compliment, by the way. I never thought they'd get together. And I just really wanted to sow some chaos. And then the first voice that spoke is like, well, my boss sent me here and I can't say no. And I just... He lost something, I guess, to this man and now I have to get it. And I really should quit my job. And then behind that, you say, oh, I'm here for Opie, actually. That's why he's not here. There's this rare mushroom, supposedly, in all the stained glass that I'm trying to get. Well, if you're looking for a new job, here, take my card. FBK is always hiring. <laughs> they all take a card. The older woman eats it. The <laughs> nervous worker kind of tucks it in a pocket. And um, the voice that's there for Opie... She kind of looks at you. She's wearing a rather revealing dress, and it's very sparkly, very show-stopping, and she just kind of tucks it in the top of her strap. I hope that card tasted good. 
<laughs> well, yes, paper is power, don't you know? <laughs> and as you're doing that, um, Ava, you are able to kind of catch bits of what the stained glass man is saying. And he's saying, welcome, welcome to the stained glass gauntlet. I hope you find everything you are looking for. Now, remember, there is nothing that is off limits. Just try to survive. And if you need to quit at any time, you are allowed to quit. You can just say, I give up and we will release you. No penalty, no harm. But if you stick it out, the prizes that await you are numerous and everything you could desire. Hmm. I have a question for you, Ju, uh, the nervous worker. What, uh, what uh, did you lose? Um, uh, I, so I don't actually know what he lost. I don't even know if he actually lost this. His name's the ancient one, and I'm sure you guys have records somewhere, but he loses stuff all the time. He's getting older now. At least, I mean, at least we're past his like midlife crisis stage, but I'll know it when I see it because he has like this magical signature thing on all of his stuff because he loses it all the time. So it's easier to reclaim. Does not ask person their name before barraging them with questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, names don't matter. <laughs> True enough. So the line slowly moves forward and you get to the front and stained glass man reaches out his hand to shake someone's hand. He's not quite sure who. Um, does someone take it? Not me. I would like to do a sleight of hand check. Okay. One of my hands is shaking his and the other one's going to see what's in his pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Surprised Pikachu face on <laughs> Cal's. Uh, or is it stealth? I don't. I've never rogued before. Um, sleight of hand yeah, sleight is of hand. is sleight. Yeah, it's sleight of hand. Do I stealth so Cal doesn't see it? <laughs> so I don't get written up. No, sleight of hand is your stealth. Uh, yeah, that is your okay. And I'm gonna roll a perception. Yeah, old way will as well, just in case. Little baby rogue got an eleven. <laughs> I got an eight. I got a twenty on perception. Dirty twenty. <laughs> Steals from Matra D. <laughs> Uh, so as you're shaking his hand, you feel around in his pockets and he doesn't seem to be noticing, <laughs> Good. but you pull out something that feels like glass and I'm assuming you're hiding it while you're talking to him. Oh yeah. So yeah. you don't quite look at it, but when you shake his hand, you're a plumber. You've been around blue collar working people. You know what strength feels like. This man feels absurdly strong. Like his grip is... Very scary. It feels like it could tear, you know, four phone books in half. No sweat. Noted. Maybe I don't steal from him anymore. <laughs> yep. And as you're shaking his hand, he goes, welcome, welcome. I was wondering if I was going to get any fire breathing kittens. I did send the invites so late. I am so excited to see you here. What is it you desire? The reward. Yes, is the reward intrinsic? It's been a while since we've had one of those, but you do know you have to name your reward in order for us to produce it. Hmm. Oh, really? So it can be so it can be anything. Anything you can think of. This is a good time to say my second goal with this character. I'm going to learn a new thing. I'm going to learn a new accent. And my second goal is I'm going to learn the encumbrance rules by getting one of every common item in 5th edition D&D. So I'm going to look up common items alphabetically, and that's going to be my, my goal. <laughs> hmm. Give so, me a sec. Ooh, wish list time. I would like an abracadabras. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's very rare. Let me get the first <laughs> common item. <laughs> <laughs> well, while she's thinking that, Cal wants to attempt to Steal what she stole and then put it back into his pocket. <laughs> really? <laughs> I haven't even looked at it yet. <laughs> I'm busy thinking about my wish list. <laughs> that's that's a good as good time as any to steal. Yep. Right. <laughs> so yes, that's going stealth. to be a 19 sleight of hand for taking it from her. What? The uh, I want an abacus, by the way. <laughs> yes, okay. You roll perception to see if you catch me. Oh yeah, wait, I'm yeah. not good at that. What rogues aren't oh, rogues aren't good at 
percepting when people... I, I will give you advantage on that perception because you have it like gripped in your hand trying to hide it. So it's not like mm-hmm. you just set it down in a pocket. Excellent. That's a 17. Oh, so he gets it. it. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, okay. what was your number? 17. Did you roll that? Oh, I got a 17. No, you... Is strength it immediate check. to beat it? <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, strength, strength check. check. I like that. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Great. You know what I'm not good at? You know what my negative one is in for this character? Uh, that's going to be a 19 for strength. I don't think I can even get that. <laughs> You're all natural, natural 20. 20. Yeah. Oh, gosh. No, of course I didn't get that. All right. So you just like <laughs> so, wrench it out of my hand and I just glare at you. And cow, I say to the guy as... defiantly, the really strong one, Abacus. <laughs> and as she says that, he sl- Cal slides it back into his pocket, hopefully unseen. I- Actually, Cal, what is your oh. armor class? My armor class? Or what or not what's your AC? Fifteen. That's what armor class is. You feel a pinch as you grab what was in her hand. <gasps> and on your hand is a stained glass mini dragon. And it is very upset. <gasps> That's so much cooler than an abacus, you jerk. <laughs> And it is not letting go of your hand. Go, little dragon, go! How does, um, okay, how does my pseudo-dragon react to it? Is your pseudo-dragon a well-trained and socialized pseudo-dragon? Uh, no. A a fiend keeps it, no. (laughs) Absolutely not. Um, So as he bites Cal's hand, your dragon kind of gets a little puffy and growls. (laughs) And so the dragon, like, lets go and turns around and growls back and flies back to Claire's shoulder to do so yes. and curls back up against her. And as it does that, our stained glass man goes, oh, oh, little apple, did you find a friend? And he just kind of goes, well, I guess you have a companion. He tends to pick one or two parties a day to travel through here with. He's not going to be much help. In fact, he's probably going to be a hindrance. But what can you do? Dragons and their hordes. He hoards friendship occasionally. <laughs> ah, so like this one. Just another just another mouth to feed. Got it. <laughs> I will find sand and will feed him. To the detriment of paying attention to other things around me. <laughs> and since it's on your neck, as you hear it like shift, it hears like it's like tinkles, <gasps> like tinkling very softly and very prettily. <laughs> I'm holding up different things for it to try to eat <laughs> like from my bag. I have some glass cutting tools. I'm just like, you want this? I break into buildings with it and it's like, Wah! and I'm like, whoop, not that one, not that one. <laughs> uh, the stained glass man kind of looks at you guys and says, well, if... The beginning shenanigans are done. You are free to enter now. The light is green. Just remember, uh, you start every round by drawing a card and rolling the wheel. And he gestures to the door. Oh, uh, your prizes, I say to my two companions, asking what they want. Oh, yes. How could I forget? (laughs) Hmm. Uh, I was too busy... Trying to give back what she stole to uh, think about what I wanted. (laughs) Well, as you all are, you all think, um, do you think your characters would know or, and you guys are just trying to decide or are your characters trying to decide characters trying to decide? I am my character. (laughs) So as you are trying to decide. He kind of looks and says, well, if you can't think of anything now, just as long as you think about it by the time you hit the final room, you should be good. We just might have to do some more work on the back end. But if you make it to the final room, I'm sure you will happily wait if you would like more time to think. Well, I I know what I want. I want power and influence. So something that will get me some of that, I guess. A daytime talk show. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I I guess some people in the public eye do have influence. I know some people. Eh, I don't know if I'd want to do that, though. Too much pandering uh, to crowds. A political position. Hmm, maybe. I mean, I am a sheriff of a small town, and that gives me some power, so maybe something more than that. Yeah, something more than that. 
keeps pushing her sheriffness up on people. <laughs> when, okay, when did I do that last? Oh, yeah, I did that with you, right. I was just trying to prove a point. <laughs> Thinks she's proving a point. <laughs> All right, but yes, DM, I am ready to enter. Cal, the, the stained glass man turns to you and he says, I noticed you tried to rescue our dear little stained glass dragon who has such a mind of his own, and I apologize that he bit you, but you seem like a man of logic and rules. Is there anything I could interest you in? I'll get back to you on that. Of course, of course. You don't have to decide now. Now, if you would like, you can enter now. Well, I'm shadowing these two, so uh, they gotta go first. I'm offering the stained glass dragon a copper, and it's looking at me like it hates me, and it might cut my throat. And I'm like, you're so cute. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Do you all enter? Yeah. I walk in. <laughs> Sweet. I, I follow the other two. So this first room that you enter, standing on a stage in the middle, is a wheel that has four options. And then there is a deck of playing cards that are also standing there. So I need whoever is going to go first to grab a d10 and a d4 and everyone else you will need those in your your turns as well because we'll be rotating through so whoever would like to be the first one to roll go ahead and roll and tell me what you got Mm, i'm going to uh i'm going to offer to claire (laughs) would you like to give it a shot oh i see you want to survive okay sure i'll go first (laughs) Uh uh-huh expendable Yep. Scared of doing things that she's forcing other people to do. <laughs> yep. A four on the D4 and a three on the D10. Oh, interesting. Four on... All right. The room lights up as you pull the card and the card is a jack of spades. And on it is a ghost, a generic adventurer and a knife. And then as you spin the wheel, it goes round and round, and it lands on a healing potion. And the door to the left opens up. Ooh. I wait for my party, because I am not going through that door alone. Yep, I'll, I'll go with you. Follows after she sees coast is clear. <laughs> Claire and Ava go through the door? Oh, he's shadowing. He has to go. And Cal. You can assume he goes where you go. So, sitting in front of you is a room, and the bottom floor is green stained glass. And on one side, there's brown, and on the other side, there's, like, cobblestone stained glass. And the stained glass in the middle you get is supposed to be a river of sorts. And on your side, sitting there is a halfling who's three foot six inches tall and she's wearing theater tech clothes black jeans and a t-shirt and a tool belt and she has been bound and gagged there's a knife and then floating above to her left is what looks like a ghost and it keeps changing features and it can't really it doesn't really feel like it's can solidified and They are seemingly, they are together, but the halfling is glaring at the ghost and going between the knife and the ghost. So out of character, I think this is probably Punnett with her murdered, uh, neglect, neglect, (laughs) killed uh, sister's fiance, but I know that they've resolved their beef. So maybe out of character, I think she's killed another person (laughs) because it's Punnett. Um, but in character, isn't it interesting how my this character doesn't dislike Punnett? So <laughs> uh, that was Love Fest. If you guys want to hear more of that, <laughs> that was a good episode. Um, gosh, this character doesn't dislike Punnett. So I guess if I see someone bound and gagged and there's a knife, the good thing that would occur to all of us to do is to cut the the bindings, right? Like, but which of us are good? <laughs> No, however, raising their hand. <laughs> however, I, I just like uh, I, I look at the halfling and then back at the ghost of the knife and just like, ah, look at that. Looks like someone's been kidnapped or something. Looks like we got 
a case to solve, or maybe this is just part of the gauntlet. But either way, something to do. <laughs> so she's happy to see someone bound and gagged. <laughs> Does not immediately go and help bound and gagged person. Uh, I, I'm going to investigate, I guess, the area. Um, yeah, because like, the ghost doesn't look like it's corporeal, so she's just like, the ghost probably didn't do it. <laughs> oh, good investigation. So, roll me investigation. Okay. Look for any clues that I could find. Uh, that will be a 12 total. So as you're looking around, do you look at the knife? Yeah, I will look at the knife. As you pick up the knife, an ins- inscription flashes across it, and it says, The remnant, the punnet, and the knife. And if you flip it over, it continues. It says, Our dear, dear halfling cannot be alone with the knife. Our dear ghost friend cannot be alone with punnet. Get them to the other side of the room one at a time. Ah, so this is like the the goat. No, not the goat. Like the chicken, the hay, and the wolf <laughs> thing. I see. I've I've heard of that before. Hmm, interesting. Doesn't say doesn't say who to tie the halfling up though. Hmm. Point seems out to be the trying obvious. To... <laughs> is trying to speak after you say that, but she's gagged, so she can't say anything. Mm, yeah. If no one else is taking off the gag, I'll take it off. Oh, finally. I came here. I'm trying to do right. Um, I I made some mistakes in my past. Pun it, Purple Boot Theater. Oh, always looking for actors in case you're interested. Um, but this ghost here, and also that man took over my theater. I thought this was going to be like some kind of production, and now my building is gone, and I'm very upset about that. But if I get the chance, I'm killing this ghost. That knife can kill it. You should kill it. Ah, so it's a knife that can kill a ghost. Interesting. You seem very quick to murder. Murder. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I've, I've been stuck here all week because this, I, I don't know if it's a company, I don't know what it is, but they offered me a lot of gold so they could use my building and I didn't think they'd just get rid of this building and I'm a little bit of an emergent murderous rage right now. No, no, no. If you kill people, you have to get paid for it. You don't just kill people. That's silly. Side glances at uh, Claire. <laughs> Is Claire an assassin? Question mark. So, hmm. So why is it? Okay, I, I got two questions for you. Um, I'm assuming your name is Punnett because there's Punnett Knife Ghost. Okay, so Punnett, um, do, do you know who bound and gagged you and stuff? That's my first question. Uh, it happened during one of the challenges. My, I can't seem to remember how or when. It has to have be something with this building so that way people can't cheat. Oh, so it was after you took this challenge then? Yes, I was oh. trying to get my building back. Oh, so so we might be tied up. Uh. <laughs> so so was that stained glass man or whoever owns this thing? Maybe it's not him. Maybe he's just the face of it. Who knows? Okay, second question. Why do you want to murder the ghost with the knife? Can you not hear him? You can't hear that? Can we hear something? Nope. No. I can't hear anything. Oh, it's it's that it's that jingle from from that lawyer and it's like get in jail from the adventures, get out. It's really bad and please use my services and it's like literally the worst jingle you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> and Punnett is saying, It is all that's all the ghost is saying, and if I can kill it, then it goes away. <laughs> Have you thought about just plugging your ears? She raises her hands that are bound. <laughs> <laughs> Cal puts cotton swabs in her ears. Hmm. Well, I have half a mind to just uh, release you, but then I'd know exactly who killed the ghost. That wouldn't be much of a mystery, now would it? Hmm. <laughs> Punnett <laughs> is like, looks up at Cal with slight wonderment and says, I can still hear it, but at least it's quieter. Thank you. <laughs> he gives her a thumbs up. <laughs> See... No murder today. Unless, you know, I mean, you would pay us. I run a theater company. I have no money. No murder today. Hmm. So, um, the, uh, 
So was it like the ghost can't be alone with Punnett and Punnett can't be alone with the knife? Was that the thing? Correct. Okay. Yep. Well, can we take two across at a time? Or all of us just take one? You can try. All right. So My should we just oh, yeah. is like we talk to the ghost too to see if like we probably won't be able to hear it say anything, but uh, out of character, don't trust pun it. <laughs> 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 so you should talk to the ghost too. Sure. <laughs> uh, what do we say to the ghost? Uh, well, yeah, you're a murder ask. detective, so what would you oh. ask? <laughs> Uh, so ghost, I, I don't know if, um, I don't know if only she can hear you or something, but, uh, yeah. H- how did you become a ghost? Who, who killed you? You know who killed you? Do you touch the ghost? Uh, not yet. No, I don't. <laughs> it just turns and stares at you. Um, uh, okay. Well, this ghost seems like, um, seems like it only talks to pun it, so... Makes assumptions about ghosts. <laughs> um, How is that a bad thing? It fails to meet job yeah. description <laughs> because makes assumptions about ghosts. <laughs> um, can, can, can you move around or are you bound to one spot? Hmm. Can, can you go over there? Let's see. What, what can you do, ghost? Where did you point when you said go over there? Farther away from Punnett toward wherever they need to cross. It backs up to the crossing. Oh. Okay, so this ghost can move. All right. Hmm. And then it, like, stops at the river-like part on the floor? Yes. So there's, like, a green path going down the middle of the room, and it's brown on one side and cobblestone on the other? Yes. Okay, and which side is the ghost on? You all are on the cobblestone side. Okay. All of us, including... Okay. All right, and so... I Ooh, it almost seems like they're avoiding this green path in the middle, like that's dangerous i guess we should all look at that and see what's the barrier right i feel like a mime in the air to see if there's an invisible wall yeah i'll investigate the surroundings of the river but i'm not going to touch the river or the path I mean, i'm just gonna I, like yeah see, see what i can find I'll, I'll touch the air around it though so there's nothing in the air you all are miming over nothing so you feel nothing <laughs> great, great as you great. get closer to the river <laughs> In the green part of the river, you realize that the green is more of like a a lake in the middle of summer green with an algae bloom. And there seem to be shapes moving underneath like fish. And it's giving the feeling of a moving green water in the middle. But it doesn't seem to be liquid. It still looks solid. Hmm. Oh, this is a clogged pipe. <laughs> Remember not to wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, I look for um, downhill and drainage, and if there's a, a clogged outlet. <laughs> there's not. It's just <laughs> blank walls in a room. Um, hey, Kale, you can fly. Um, I wonder, did you fly over the other side? Or is there something that would prevent you from doing that? Well, first, astute observation. <laughs> Second, okay. Cal's gonna get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time to tell you guys I don't have any ranged weapons on me. I have Eldritch Blast and a crossbow. <laughs> good, good. You won't completely die. <laughs> Do you fly over, Cal? Sure. Nothing happens. You land, you're safe, you're on the brown side. Woohoo! I'm on the poop side, now what? (laughs) Well, Kale, could you please be a deer and um, get us over there too and them? No, I don't know what order to bring them in. Maybe one of us first. Have you tried just walking across it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to try that, Claire? Does not try obvious things first. You know, you are so good at this flying. Why don't you fly me across the river, too? Yeah, exactly, Cal. You're also good at picking people up while flying. How much are you going to pay me? Because now you're asking me to work. How much do you want? How much you got? Uh, how much do I got? Um, give you five gold. Add a one and two zeros after that, and you got a deal. 
Yeah, I don't have that much gold. Go we'll try walking. Oh, Jess, what was the prize prize you wanted to win at the end of this? 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 Oh, uh, I was thinking a ring of protection, because I need more protection from the likes of you. Well, that's what you win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get us all across. <laughs> and I get paid more. Hmm. Well, if, if my reward comes with that much gold, you can have it. Just try walking. See what happens. Okay, I'm gonna stealth check. <laughs> Maybe they won't notice me. And I try to walk across the river. Can I stealth? Yes. Thank you. Are you just walking by yourself, or are you taking the knife, or are you taking punnet, or are you taking the ghost? Well, let's see if I've fallen and get eaten, and if I do, they'll still have the knife, and they can fly across. So I'm just, just taking myself, and that's a 19 on stealth. Okay, you slink across the back wall, and you do notice while you're stealthing, there are no doors currently. Hmm. And the minute you step on the green, nothing happens. You don't fall through, you step across, ripples kind of roll out from your feet, and you cross to the brown. Whoa, that's cool. I like the ripples coming across, you know, from my feet. That's nice. I like that. Um, if this wasn't it, monsters lurking beneath water of solid ground, it'd be really cool. <laughs> so I mm -hmm. guess um, I, I go back and I'm going to try the knife first because it's the smallest. I can easily lift and move it. Don't have to worry Everybody about. Everybody could just grab something and go at the same time. Do yeah, you that's like true. Do you like a fan for the ghost? You just like push it across the room with your fan. I'm making hand gestures. It's not helping. <laughs> like, um, Cal's gonna fly back over, grab Punnett's chair, just fly her over. <laughs> okay, you got okay. there first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll get the ghost then. Um, I'll say, "Hey, ghosty, why don't you come and follow me? This this green path seems safe enough." It's following behind you, but it's you get a chill down your back because you're being followed by a ghost. Now, the question is, is do you do that at the same time that Claire is moving the knife? No, uh, no, 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 no. I hold off. Oh, um, so you're going to wait for... So who should who would go first then, Cal? Cal, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll go next after Cal. Okay, so Cal had Punnett. Oh. Uh, you get over with oh, the... Punnett. Oh, wait, Punnett and the ghost. With the ghost. Wait, but then Punnett and the knife, Punnett and the ghost... Oh, hmm. What if we do ghost to knife and then pun it? Okay, let's do that. Um. So. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, ghost did to Cal fly then. pun it back? Uh, if if Cal already flew pun it back, then I mean, I'll say um. Oh, hold on there, Cal. We we can't leave pun it alone with either of these two things. So I think pun it should go last, and the two of us should go first. Pun it's not alone. I'm here right with him. Hmm, perhaps you're right. Neither of them are alone, because we're there with them. That's true. That's true. Cal, go first. I'm already over here. Yeah, they're, they're over. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go then. <laughs> you step on the green, the ghost follows behind you, you are across. Hmm. I run across with a knife. Everything glows. Punnett says, Congratulations. And a door opens up. Both overthinking way too damn much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a knife and there's a ghost there. And I look at Punnett and I say, how much you pay? Soliciting murder. <laughs> Ava just watches, <laughs> amused. Punnett is just staring and says... You can try, but then we'll get reset, and we'll have to do this all again. I will get loose at some point. Zero is not a price. Okay, I put the knife down. I'm like, uh, and way out of her reach. I'm like, okay, bye-bye. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm like tempted to let Punnett go. But... <laughs> all right, well, there's a door, so I'm just like, bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go after um, Claire, because it's more important to get the gauntlet, <laughs> to win the gauntlet, <laughs> rather than let a criminal loose <laughs> to create more crimes. Besides, I probably know who did it. <laughs> Finally. Jeez. <laughs> you all are back in your starting room with the deck of cards and the spinning wheel. Who is going to draw a card and spin the wheel? Uh, I'll do it. 
So D4 okay, and D10 D4. and then, yep, a D10 first and then the D4. Three for the D10 and four for the D4. <laughs> Isn't that the exact Whoa. same as last time? Yeah. What are the odds? No. Very oh, no. Low. It is not the same thing. Um. So as you spin the wheel, you all actually feel kind of a rush and you now have 10 hit points and 10 temporary hit points on top of your hit point balance. And as you, so you can take a guess and take a gander that spinning, so rolling a four for players, but spinning the healing potion heals you if you complete the challenge. Huh. Interesting. So the door opens up on the other side of the room. (laughs) After you, my dear. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. (laughs) I stealthily enter the next area. Can I stealth? Yes. All right. So I just walk through like I'm a worker. I'm in working clothes, and I'm just casually strolling, uh, and that's a 17. Um, as you scroll stroll in, you notice there is no one there. It's a dimly lit room, and this time the stained glass around you seems to be gray and kind of streaked, so it's trying to mimic stones, and it is all surrounding you completely. Did everyone else enter the room? Yeah. Or are you waiting? I'll, I'll enter after Claire entered. Maybe she's just scared of doors. <laughs> yeah, really. You just you just go to hell when you die, and then you come back. Why are you so scared? She doesn't like hell. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've heard that. <laughs> Who likes hell? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Demons are always coming out of there. That's true. Because she, she, she loses some power every time she goes back there. Alrighty. In this room, the door shuts behind you. There are no longer any doors. In this room, there is a large glowing gold button in the center. A spiral of numbers goes out from it, and the numbers are all in gold, and they're inscripted on the floor. And there's nothing else. Hmm. So there's numbers on the floor? Yep, and they're spiraling out from the button. And they seem to be the largest numbers by where you guys entered, and the smallest number is near the button. Hmm. What's the number closest to us? Ten. So there's and the card you drew was the queen, was a queen. Hmm. Queen. Uh, what? Which which color? A red queen. Red queen. Okay. Uh, so there's nothing on the floor or in the room except for the numbers. And the button. And the button. Hmm. And how are they arranged? Are they arranged like in an order? Or are they arranged like? Are they scattered? So it starts with ten where you guys entered, and it spirals counting down to zero to the button. Oh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I am stumped as a player. <laughs> Just like I do not know. Uh, Can I perception around the room? Yeah. Fifteen. You see the cobblestone glass, stained glass, the glowing button, and across the bottom it says "push me," and then the numbers counting down. Hmm. Okay. Um. Do you guys want to push it? Um. Sure, I guess there doesn't seem to be anything else around around to do. Um, I'm here to observe. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you would watch us push a doomsday button and be like, failed to save world, and just <laughs> we would all die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I ready. Um, I've got my hand in my right pocket. No particular reason. The DM, I've readied okay. a attack against... Yeah. Anyone. Anyone who shows up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go from the number nine, 10 to the number 9. Like, I'm going to start going toward it, but following the numbers in the spiral. Okay. Nothing happens. Go to the next number. <laughs> Nothing happens. Yeah. I'll, like, I've, got, I've got an attack action ready as well. Just, like, have my okay. hand on as, my saber. As you're hopping number to number, nothing happens. <laughs> Looks goofy someone... while hopping on one leg. Oh, I, I don't, I, I don't hop. I just walk over. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just, I just walk around in a circle, yeah, kind so of, but slowly. As you're walking in a circle, nothing happens. Does someone press the button? Once I get in the middle, I will. Okay, how do you press it? Do you press it hard? Do you press it soft? Uh, I mean, I have a strength of of eight as well, so I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not very strong. I press it like. <laughs> So that it goes down, but I'm not going to, like, apply a lot of force to it, I guess. There's a click that echoes through the room, 
And the ten glows. Then the nine glows. Then the eight. Then the seven. Then the six. Then the five. Then the four. Then the three. Then the two. Then the one. Happy New and Year! <laughs> <laughs> And there's a second click, and a door is revealed, and you feel refreshed as you get another 10 temporary hit points. Okay. (laughs) Nice. Okay. I had 17 to start, and I'm at 37 now. I'm like, this tower is great. Wait, did they they stack? Yeah, they stack. Okay. I don't know if that's technical D&D, so listeners don't come at me, but for this (laughs) case, they stack. Very nice. Okay. You can do it mechanically by giving us 20, even if they don't stack. So any rules lawyers out there, that might be what happened. 35. Oh, true. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, if the door is not glowing, then I'll go through it. But if it is glowing, then I won't go through it first. It's, it's, it looks like the door that takes you to the drawing room. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. <laughs> Finally got over fear of doors. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so I do believe it's Cal's turn to roll us a d10 and a d4. Okay, well, yes for it. <laughs> the 10 and a 4. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> we will only Notice. roll 4s. <laughs> um, ah, there it is. Alright, the door opens up. What was the card? The, oh, the card is an Ace of Hearts. That's red. Yes. Do you walk in? Yeah, in my regular fashion after Claire. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my gosh, okay. Me, please. Claire walks in. She's doing a, a stealth check to quiet her feet and not look all that obvious. Got an 11 just trying to walk in a room. Okay, yep, you walk in. In the middle of this room... It's very similar to the last room, very plain, very dungeon-esque in the stained glass work. There's a polished emerald inlaid with a gold holder in the center, and it looks almost like a globe, like it's not cut like a typical emerald. It seems to be glowing from within, and it's in a globe shape. Ooh, cushion cut instead of princess. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near the emerald, um, but I will do an investigation check of the rest of the room, I guess, and see if I notice anything. The roll me investigation or perception. I'll do investigation. Oh my god, I got a natural 20 for 26. You notice <laughs> on the walls in the gray stained glass, there seem to be faces swapping in between the different glass, uh, because they're shaped like stones, so they have like the silver around them to hold them together. And the faces keep flashing from one to the other. And they're very nondescript faces and kind of um, like opaque-ish. And they just keep flipping between the different stones. So the faces keep on flipping between the stones? On the walls. walls. Okay, is there like a pattern that they go in or is it random? It's it's random. Okay. I'm going to point that out to my um, allies, to the party. Hmm. Faces. <laughs> hmm. This is Cal's room. I'm just going to watch. <laughs> We're observing the observer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Trying to get me to do her job. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's your job, too. You're part of the fire breathing kittens as well. I'm doing my job. I'm observing you. And I'm writing down all your effed up stuff. <sighs> well, the only idea I have is to... Uh, wait, are, so are there, like, more than one stone? And then, like, there's faces flashing behind them? When I say stone, it's stained glass. Stained like, this glass. whole thing is stained glass. But it's stained glass to cut to look like a stone on the wall. So it's like you're in a dungeon, but it's made of stained glass. Oh, um, I see. So yes is the answer to that. And they're just flashing all over the walls. And then don't forget, you have the glowing emerald globe in the middle of the room. Hmm. There's a glowing emerald globe, and there's, like, a holder for it. Uh, I'll go within, I'm not going to, okay, 10 feet of it. And I'll look, I'll try to investigate the holder and the globe from that distance. 
it's very the holder is very ornate and the glowing seems to come within the emerald Hmm. no inscriptions or anything on the holder or like buttons or something like that nope um yeah it does look like it'll spin i will give you that it does look like it'll spin if you push it hmm well i I was gonna say i'm not touching that because it glows and i don't know what kind of magic might be in there um there are certain types of magic that yeah no i will not touch i will not get near if i can avoid it but it looks like this thing spins so someone want to give it a spin I'll, I'll be right behind you i'll attack something if it comes out <laughs> i'll defend you but i'm not gonna touch it it's just hilarious to me that the one person who like can die <laughs> repeatedly and come back you can am flux this and just hit every fail condition and still finish the dungeon and you're like scared scared <laughs> Yeah, very different from my last character, who, if she dies, just, like, comes a, comes a spirit and maybe, and probably will never come back. <laughs> she uh, had a yeah. girlfriend. She had the most to lose. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> God, you should show her how it's done. There's no R in there to roll. It's good that there's no R in there for you to roll. <laughs> hey, practice makes better. <laughs> I think you should go over there and do it. I mean, I'm the one that solved your wars for crying out loud. That's true. Okay. Fair. Um, uh, Had to solve I... her problem and she will not do mine. <laughs> Ava, you got this. Pushes nope. it off on Ava instead of rolling it herself. I just don't want Ava to be afraid. Life is too short. Hmm. All right. I, I mean, I haven't trained you very much, Penny, but oh my there, there, gosh! There's a ball. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm gonna push you towards it. I literally, I'm gonna do a shove. It's a legit move in five e. I would like to do a shove with my nine strength. I, I will counteract that with my eight strength. <laughs> All right. I guess strength check. <laughs> Three. Uh, three for me as well. <laughs> I'm going to try to acrobatics my way out of it. <laughs> so you guys are at a standstill, pushing back and forth. Engaging in slap acrobatics. fight with each other. <laughs> I rolled a 12 oh. in acrobatics to try to avoid it. <laughs> you can roll something in response, Claire. This is really entertaining, so I really don't care what you roll. Just roll something. Pick a skill. I got a nine in athletics. And what was yours, Ava? Uh, Twelve. Oh, okay. So as you go to shove, you guys kind of get in a little, you go, no, you go, like push fight. And Ava manages to wiggle her way out and down. And you stumble forward, Claire, and you brush against the globe. And it goes dark for a second. And when you wake up, is a question, is Cal holding a clipboard? He's holding his uh, his official FBK notebook. You, the blackness fades and you are looking down at an official FBK notebook. Cal, you are looking at a dragon on your shoulder. And Ava, you are wearing plumber's gear. <laughs> Oh Cal walks over, grabs his notebook. Did a freaky Friday on me. <laughs> so I, I see. So I see, like me going and grabbing the notebook. <laughs> I'm gonna say, "Hey, what are you doing now?" Oh wow! So that's how. Mm, okay. <laughs> Takes other people's stuff. <laughs> it's mine in the first place, <laughs> and that's my body you stole. Oh. I, I, I look down at myself and confirm. Yeah, I look at my hands and I guess, what is Cal again? He can fly? Oh, dude, I'm flying. <laughs> so you all have been body swapped. And as you are getting your getting back into figuring out which body you're in, the floor lights up and it says, you can only trade with one person once. And you cannot trade back again. Use your resources wisely. And you do notice that our little stained glass dragon friend seems to have perked up from Claire's shoulder and is sitting on the edge of the globe expectantly. And 
next to him is your pseudo dragon (laughs) ava and they seem personality wise um, the little stained glass dragon seems to be just fine and your pseudo dragon seem to be just fine and not involved in this swap Hmm. but the stained glass dragon as much as it can is looking expectantly at the three of you i'm flying away (laughs) there's no doors darn it (laughs) i want to be able to fly come on a human becoming an Aarakocra? Cal spins it again. What? I am a human now? What is this? Are you thinking of someone specific when you spin it, Cal? Me. So when you spin it, it goes dark for a second, and you wake up in your own body, and then I put you in Ava's, correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Claire, you are in Ava's body now. <laughs> did, did I stay the same? I, am I still in Claire's body? Yes. <laughs> You are still in Claire's body. Huh. Okay, okay guys. Spin it. Yep. You're and think of yourself. Like oh, you can like cast spells, right? Yeah, I, I like can. Eldritch Blast? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I can. So I can cast oh, um, Charm Person, Eldritch Blast, Vicious uh-huh. Mockery. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I want to Eldritch Blast the wall. Or the gem in the middle. I want to oh, yeah. Eldritch How Blast the gem in the middle. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> It's it's an object. You hit it. And now um, you're stuck you, forever like that. Dude. <laughs> when you hit it, it reflects off. So I'm going to need deck saves from all of you. But the ones that are switched, you need to use the other person's deck save. Hey, opening. Oh, that's what we have your character sheets for. I see. Deck save. Oh, wow. This is a really good. Okay. I got a 24. <laughs> yeah, I'm dexterous. Say, you, hey, careful with that. 19. Careful with that. <laughs> I'm pulling up my so. new deck save. Everything's in a different layout. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So the 20. Your dexter's two. Mm-hmm. Dang, 16. So you all managed to dodge. There's some interesting scrabbling and turning and flipping. And the dragons are not super happy with anyone at this point. <laughs> and they're, very, they're squawking in a way, but the the stained glass squawking just sounds like loud pieces of glass clinking together really angrily <gasps> and they're kind of floating f- flying above everyone as the eldritch eldritch blast bounces around the room and it seems to be after a minute absorbed by the walls and you all are still in opposite bodies <laughs> Ava spin the globe think of yourself fix you want her to do that again <laughs> um i'm just i'm just going to turn to um Claire and Ava's body and say, "Hey, be careful! Do not, do not kill my, do not kill my dragon, okay? It is very, um, it is a very good dragon, and I cannot lose that. Why am I talking like this? I cast charm person <laughs> on who? <laughs> on you, my friend. Okay. You are very susceptible to this. <laughs> uh, tra- oh yeah, uh huh. So that, that's a wisdom save, right? Um, oh, I gotta, but, like, I, look I gotta up s- charm person. Hold on, charm yeah, look it up. person." <laughs> Looks like Claire is going to murder Ava (laughs) in Claire's body. Make a wisdom saving throw. I got a 16. Oh, and I'm looking up your spell save DC. I think it's 13. Everything's on different pages. (laughs) It's on the first page. Why? (laughs) Okay, I'm going to trust you that it's 13. Um, Okay, so you you pass, but I just want to say what I would say when I would charm you. I would say, mm, what's something that you want that Ava has? Southern accent, please, because I'm trying to do your accent. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, you are just better than me in every way. You have horns and I don't, which are cooler. You have wings and I don't, which are cooler. Oh, I know. No, because you're as dexterous as me. You are just legit better than me in every single way. I- I'm less dexterous than you. You have a 16 in dexterity. <laughs> eh, same thing. It's like... Hmm. I look at you and I try to charm you and this fails. So what I say is, well, you you blend in better now. <laughs> You're more uh, uh, normal. Oh, yes, I sure I sure do. I mean, I should I should be in this form more often. I, I do blend in very well. You are right. Roll your oh. R's. You are right. <laughs> well, if, if I roll my R's too much, it turns into Russian. If I... <laughs> 
If I roll my R's too much, oh no, that is too, that is actually pretty good. Okay, yes. Um, I will go like this then. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, you, you didn't charm me, but what happens is actually like um, your eyes glow red, and instead of just having red irises like they usually do, they like turn all red, fully red, and golden markings show up on on your on your face when you cast your fiendish magic. <laughs> um, so yeah, wanted to say that happens. <laughs> Not when. How do you feel, Ava, seeing yourself casting? <laughs> yeah, and seeing how yourself. cool you are as not a human, and you're not boring, and you don't blend in everywhere, and like people pay attention to you, and you stand out, and you're all pretty and stuff. I guess that's why it failed, because you don't actually <laughs> want to be bland. Yeah, I, I guess so. Like I, I just like look at myself, and I'm just like, hmm. Well, all right. <laughs> I, I am charmed, but not in the charm person way. <laughs> I mean, yeah, one of your flaws is you can't resist a pretty face, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, hmm. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, do your, I'll do you a favor at some at some point in this body or the other body. But yeah, you, you just got a favor from a devil. <laughs> You're not a sheriff anymore if you say that body. She is. I go to the gym because I just feel bad about, like, not letting Ava have her superior body and <laughs> I touch it and, and want to go back to my own body. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, like the, the, the stained glass to you now is is, is scary. Like the, the stained glass around it. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, like the, you, under, you begin to understand why she doesn't want to do things first because stained glass is in churches. So like instinctively you just shrink away from them. Oh, like I reach out my hand to touch the gem and it like flares stove hot from the stained glass and ah i don't want that and and then i like reach jerk my hand back and i look at you with like oh this is her life hmm. <laughs> and then i touch the gem are you thinking about your own body yeah switching back. <laughs> i want to go back to being invisible you switch back and a door opens oh thank and god get, get out of here 10 hit points <laughs> cal's through that door he's he's done with that did you yeah. just say we have 47 <laughs> hit points now yeah <laughs> I'm very scared yep. about this upcoming fight. <laughs> I started out at 17. I have 47 hit points. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, this is... This fight's going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to kill Kill. So we are back to Ava drawing a card and spinning the wheel. Okay. we Will do. Oh my god, I got another three on the D10. I got a one on the D4 this time. Yep. Three on the D10, one on the D4. So as you go to draw, you draw another you draw another queen. This one is black. Mm. And you said you rolled a one. Yeah. You die. Ah, my favorite color. <laughs> Nothing happens right away, but the door opens up. Do you walk through the door? <laughs> um, I will follow Claire because now she understands. <laughs> oh gosh. Of course. Okay. Um, I mean, I get it now because you stand out. So, like, you want me to go first because you're used to everyone focusing all their attention, both negative and positive, on you. So yeah, and yeah. And, be, and in case there's like a sudden burst of radiant energy, <laughs> and you're surrounded you by stained glass. Yeah, I go first, like you want, and I don't like nag you about it. <laughs> I wonder if you would be more comfortable in a cave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one that's purely dark. I would, actually. Alrighty, as you guys walk in, you are back into that first cobblestone room, and in the middle, there is now a glowing green button, and the numbers by your feet start at 20, and if you have any magical inclinations, you all of a sudden just feel it turned off. No connection, nothing. Hmm. Including, like, innate stuff? Yep. Oh, wow. Nada. So then, um, hmm. Well, I guess radiant magic can still kill me. So <laughs> I was just like, hmm, maybe I won't be afraid of stuff anymore. But no, <laughs> I, I just got weaker suddenly. You see, Ava just kind of deflate slightly. Her wings droop a bit more. Oh, look, your wings got a little bit more useless. Yeah, thanks <laughs> for pointing that out, Kale. You're welcome. <laughs> Shakes her head. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, this is this is interesting. I, I guess maybe after uh, maybe after you um, turn down my magic in the other room, they don't want it anymore. I'm gonna say that to Claire. <laughs> hmm. 
So it's the same setup you've seen before. The numbers are just larger. So they start at 20 instead of 10, and they spiral into the center of the room to the glowing button. And they're green instead of gold. Yep, green instead of gold. Yeah, I mean, like, there's no door in here? Nope. Hmm. Not until you hit that button. All right, I hit the button. The countdown begins. 20, 19, 18, (laughs) 17, 16, 15, 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and all the numbers are flashing green. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there's a whoosh as a door swings open. And as you, do you step through the door? Yeah. As you step through the door, Ava, you feel your powers return and you are back to the drawing room. (sighs) Do we get 20 HP now? No, because you rolled a one. Ava, did you share that you felt your powers just turn off? No. Okay. No, I I, I didn't. So to the other two, (laughs) nothing seemed to happen when you rolled that one. And the image on the wheel, I should have said this earlier, but the image on the wheel was just an X, just a plain X. Do we still have our temp HP? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, okay. You just didn't get any additional one. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Who, who's up? Gal, do you do you want to go again? Oh, I've already gone. I I go last. I'm observing. All right. I got a a four and a three. Four on the d10. Three on the d4. As you go to draw the cards, you draw the jack of spades again. However, instead of a door opening. You hear a voice come over and say, oh, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Just put it in the receptacle. And a little bin pops out from the little um, stand that the cards are on. And it says, draw again. I put the whole deck in the receptacle. (laughs) The voice comes across and says, oh, how funny, how funny. And the deck just appears again. And you can draw again and roll again. I draw again. For that D10. A uh, three and a four. <laughs> three on the D10 and a four on the D4. <laughs> and then I, I draw again. I just put that deck in the receptacle too. DM's nodding. And it's a six and a two. Six on the D10, two on the D4. So you get a jack of hearts and the door opens. All right, I'm through the door. Mm-hmm. Going after. As you walk through the door and the door slides shut behind you. And Cal. And Cal. Who I'm assuming is following, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. right <laughs> okay. In the back, just like as always, he has to observe. You seem to be picked up in a whirlwind. And when the whirlwind fades, you all feel different. Cal, you feel oddly magical. I don't want to be Ava. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's something within you that wants it. (laughs) Keeps on drawing. That's funny. Ava, you suddenly have a strange amount of knowledge of plumbing (laughs) floating through your head. And Claire, you feel the urge to take notes. (laughs) And with that... We are going to go on our break and we will come back to solve this pu- this puzzle after. We were joined today by Cal. Stop making me be Ava. <laughs> Ava. <laughs> oh, great. I'm a human again. Wait. Oh, great. I am a human again. Wonderful. <laughs> and Claire. Wait, am I Cal? Am I Ava? Wait, wait. Cal. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Every, oh, wait, wait, we got a review. <laughs> we do. I'm, oh, yes, I'm we trying to review. I'm trying to scroll to find it. There it is. It is from Moonrise the Artificer. It is five stars and it says Amazing Podcast. This is an amazing podcast and a great scape, no matter the situation. Wing slash nugget forever. And don't be Ava. <laughs> 
Uh, wow. And I think they left us a review before and then they edited it because it had cut off in the middle of a particularly entertaining word. Um, so thank you for your review twice. We read it twice. And I just edited it again. You did? Yeah. Oh, and don't be Ava. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, I mean, someone should leave a review saying that Ava's their favorite character now. Yeah, All you right. have to. And if you leave us that review, we'll read it on air. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> we hope that you're enjoying this episode of Fire Breathing Kittens. This episode's shout out is from Brick Cats, who says, quote, The Talking Bread, Volume 1. 18 slices of sentient bread are set loose. Their creator, the Master Baker, will stop at nothing to capture his carbohydrate creations. The Talking Bread is a 64-page trade paperback collection of issue 1 to 3 from the comic book series. End quote. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please share it with them. Is a special day coming up? We can wish them a happy message on your behalf. You can arrange for us to read your shout-out on air at firebreathingkittenspodcast.com. Do you enjoy reading books? You can find ebooks, paperbacks, hardcovers, and audiobooks based on our adventures on Amazon and Audible. The authors do a great job of adapting the stories into fun novels. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Imagine owning a notebook with the Fire Breathing Kittens logo on the front, or a t-shirt with one of your favorite characters. Lastly, we don't pay to advertise our show, so the only way we can grow is if you tell someone about us. Thank you. Welcome back to the Fire Breathing Kittens. We are joined today by <laughs> Cal. I, I'm Ava now, actually, so uh, hello. <laughs> and Ava. I'm in Claire's body. I'm a plumber right now. Great. Wonderful. I've got other skills besides plumbing, but I won't say anything about those. <laughs> Shit rolls downhill. <laughs> and Claire always writes instead of participating and we you guys have currently stepped into a new room and you aren't actually swapped bodies you're still in your own bodies you just have you feel like you have each other's powers so players for how this is going to work so you have the other person's character sheet but you are still in your own body so you will be doing your checks for their abilities via your own stats huh oh so their abilities oh i see it's a bummer for whoever got claire <laughs> oh man i can't even keep it straight i think that's ava yeah um yeah, okay so yeah, you just lose cal all your magic ava. and get nothing <laughs> yeah cal has ava ava has claire claire has cal uh so hold on so i use ava's stats but with claire's abilities Yes. Or Claire's stats. Claire doesn't have any abilities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, higher is sleight of hand and stealth, but actually they're going to be lower. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I legit am just worse than you. I have no magic and I have lower abilities. <laughs> yeah. You also have her sword. <laughs> you have a short okay. sword. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's not She's my patch mad. weapon. <laughs> She's mad. <laughs> I, I am downloading Ava's character sheet right now. Yeah, most of what you need to know is on the first page, but like if you need something specific, you can go to other pages. And hmm. Cal now has Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. Um, yep. so and Vicious Mockery. <laughs> oh, I already had Vicious Mockery. I just do that naturally. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't do damage. Hmm, what can I do? I can speak Draconic now. Wow. What is Echoes of Victory? Flurry of Blows. You're a monk! I can monk. I can step of the wind. <laughs> oh, hey, I have cutting action. So as you step into this room, this room seems brighter. It almost seems like a treasure room, but there are no actual treasures. There are bookshelves filled with scrolls, but it's a very ornate room. And there is a statue in the middle, and there seems to be an inscription written underneath the statue. And the statue is staring at a mirror across the... So the mirror is next to the door where, well, where the door was, where you guys came in. It is now gone. And the statue is staring at you. You are surrounded by scrolls, and there's an inscription on the bottom that if you would like to read it, you can 
get closer because it's not terribly large. Cal Eldridge blasts the inscription. <laughs> hey, now, careful with that. I told you. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, it, well, I mean, Claire had to do it, so I got to do it, too. <laughs> I have oh, Ava. Wait, why am I talking like that? I'm in my own body. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, are we still talking hits. like ourselves? <laughs> The Eldritch Blast hits and is absorbed by the statue. And nothing else happens. I run very quickly up to the statue and I flurry of blows it. <laughs> Pow. Pow. When your hits land, because the statue is made of stained glass, oh. cracks appear across, but then they seem to simultaneously be healing themselves. So you hit, there's a crack, a ripple comes down, it heals itself. I viciously mock the statue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll attack it with my short with the short sword. <laughs> oh, you don't have a sword. <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> oh wait, I, I attack it with my um with with my rapier then. No, no, no. But it's not no. as magical. Do you have my character Sorry, sheet? The one I sent most recently. Yes. But basically, the short sword is strapped to the thigh inside oh. the pocket, and you don't tell people you have it. Uh, spoilers. No one heard this. <laughs> oh right. Yes. I'll cut it. Um, <laughs> I just, um, yeah, true. But you, okay. you I just, appear um, completely unarmed until you slit someone's throat. You do nothing actually, but death blows. I, I have, wait, I have my own weapon. Yeah, I have my own weapon. Oh, okay, good. Okay, all right. Right. It's a saber. Man, so many it. spoilers for everybody. <laughs> there are so many words in this character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you all hit it. Um... It does nothing. It cracks and it heals itself. What is our vicious mockery of this statue? What does that sound like? That sounds like I can dance. You can't. Ha ha ha. <gasps> That's really mean. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the statue cracks along its eye like a tear is falling down and then it like heals itself. So, guys, it, it looks like it looks like doing damage to this thing is going to do anything, really. Uh, I'm going to try to investigate around here to see what happens. Um, what is... So I, I wouldn't have an expertise. Oh, I have a way that you can investigate. Ava, does it look like if you push the statue, like in The Legend of Zelda, by five feet in any one direction, that it'll make a do-do-do-do-do-do-do sound and we'll open a door? Maybe. I mean, I got a um, 22. Yeah, what direction should I gust of wind this in? We're in our own bodies. Use your own voice. No. <laughs> I don't have my accent yet. <laughs> Becoming a monk just made you cow. Just made you grumpier. For the listeners, I didn't know I was going to play today until like five seconds before I played, so I don't have my character voice yet. So, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> mocks Cal, even though I'm the one with vicious mockery right now. Um, okay, hold. Okay, so you're investigating. What did remind me your investigation role? Twenty two. <laughs> Twenty two. There's an inscription on the bottom of the statue, and the inscription says, "Show me wisdom." And as you're kind of flo <gasps> floating around the room, you, you can pull up in the. Do you pull up into the scrolls? Or are you too scared still? <laughs> no, still in my body. Too scared. Okay, so if, if I was in someone else's body, I wouldn't be. But yeah, no. <laughs> the scrolls do seem old and like scholarly. Um, so there's something you would see in like an ancient library. But you don't know what's in them because you're not touching them and opening them. Hmm. There, there are some scrolls here and it says, show me wisdom on the bottom of that statue. So I think it has to do with one of these scrolls here. I'm not touching them, though. They my could goodness. be holy or something. Oh, yeah, well, goodness. somebody stole my wisdom, so I'm just going to stand here and record like I always do. <laughs> somebody stole my wisdom. That's me. And I have a bunch of wisdom now. So much wisdom. Oh, my gosh. In fact, my spellcasting modifier for this gust spell is wisdom. So, uh, But you don't have magic. I have your abilities, which means I have wind color. Wind collar. Yeah. No. Special abilities: wind collar, parentheses wisdom. 
It's on your character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at yours. <laughs> it's at the bottom of it's two pages. It's at the bottom of the first page. We really are learning about each other's characters. <laughs> so we're learning about our own characters here. <laughs> it says wind caller, parentheses wisdom, special abilities. So I looked it up and it's an Aarakocra ability and it says oh. I can cast the gust spell using wisdom as my spell modifier. Oh, it's a race thing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wind caller. It's okay, your there there it is. <laughs> hey. I this is only the second time I played this, okay? Oh, that's right. I don't know my character at all. I still don't know how to rogue. Um, yeah. And this is the first uh, also, time I've been a bird person, so you know what? <laughs> I, I I didn't know I didn't know that. That's fair. Hey, ask me how cunning action works. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just like disengage or dodge or hide as a bonus action. I'm glad yeah, you're playing um, the rogue. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm playing the monk. Look, we're all doing things we know how to do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, okay, I'm yeah. going to cast Gust on the statue to open up all the scrolls so that they hover in midair and uh, I try to read them and then the gust spell happens. So, like I had in my mind what was gonna happen, like, oh, I'm gonna open all the scrolls and I'm gonna like read them. And then actually they get whipped across the room by a gust of air. <laughs> As you do that, you clear all the shelves, some of them open <laughs> and they seem to be indecipherable runes and like very complicated you get like snitches of what looks like spells and then everything gets shoved to the corner of the room and the statue is still standing except for the mirror the mirror stays on the wall magic's hard using my one and only spell slot without my permission <laughs> i did it to ava too it's only fair <laughs> no you use cantrips <laughs> you use cantrips I know I I uh, charmed her. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that, okay. that was my racial ability. I don't too. know yep. what spell slots are, you guys. <laughs> yeah, that that wasn't using a spell slot. It was just using like um the one a day kind of thing. Actually, wait, yeah, yeah. One. I used her one a day. <laughs> yeah, one a day thing. Yep. <laughs> I'm really glad we all have 47 hit points because I've used every one <laughs> entire party spell slot. It's okay. I I don't think charm person's really gonna come in handy here. Ooh, who knows? Maybe. And and then we'll look at you. It's just like. <laughs> We're screwed. We're gonna die. How, how many spell slots do you have? Uh, oh, one. Yeah, actually, wait. I think. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it's die. gone. Um, no, it's 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 not because you can cast um yeah hellish rebuke or comprehend languages, but comprehend language is a ritual, so I'd only just cast that as a ritual. We're gonna die. hellish rebuke. <laughs> but can do that now, just once. Yeah, like I can cast charm person without using spell slots once a day. It'll be twice a day once I reach level three. Cal cast Hellish Rebuke on the <laughs> statue. Oh my. But no, you can't do that because because it, you can do it only as a reaction once it's damaged you. So if the statue damages you, you can do that. But no, you can't. Hey, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I hit you. I'm a monk. I use Flurry of Blows. <laughs> I, cast, I, ca I cast Hellish Rebuke. Oh boy! I have and I'm just watching here, like hit points. To so <laughs> yeah, p p play with the devil's power. Yep, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Roll the hit. <laughs> okay, all right. Flurry of blows. Right. I dealt five damage to you. The eighteen hit. Okay, I'm taking uh, five hit points out of my temporary hit points. <laughs> As I punch you in the face. <laughs> And what does Hellish Rebuke do? Uh, it's 2d10 fire damage, but they have to make a deck save. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, yep. Uh, Claire makes deck. a death deck save. A death save, save already? <laughs> death save, yes. <laughs> That's how powerful Hellish Rebuke is. A dex, okay. And I use Cal's dex, right? Y no, 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 yours. Oh, yours. Oh, no, yours. You're in your own body. 13. That's my DC, so you pass it. Yep. Okay. Meet it to beat it. So is that half damage? Is half damage, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what do I take? 2d10, half of 2d10 damage. <laughs> Round down. That's going to be six damage. I'm at 41 temporary hit points. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ava's just going to go to the, go to like the, um, go, go to the wall in the center and just like bang her head against it, do an arm strike against herself and do zero damage. <laughs> Okay, so what are we doing, guys? I kind of forget. Um, right, do you well, want a summary of the room? We had fun. 
Now we gotta get back to work. <laughs> yeah. It was just bonk, bonk, bonk right in the center <laughs> of the room. <laughs> This is the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> I'm never going to top this. Um, okay, so to summarize, all the scrolls are off the walls oh, and yeah. in a pile in the corner. The statue is still in the middle. The inscription on the bottom says, show me, what does it say? It says, show me wisdom. There is a mirror across from it and the mirror stayed on the wall. And it's a floor to ceiling, like floor to ceiling mirror. It's a big mirror. You can see the statue in the whole room. And y'all are f- hitting each other. <laughs> it's just like, well, we're clearly failing at showing wisdom. <laughs> I have zero wisdom right now. So I'm playing to my strengths. <laughs> I forget if you're playing me or not. Uh, are you playing Ava? No, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm playing Claire. Okay. Oh. Wait, but I, I have a crossbow. I could have used the crossbow. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> oh, man. I, so my stats are the highest in wisdom because I have Cal's wisdom of 17. So um, wisdom is reflected in the skills insight, medicine, perception, and survival. So I'm going to try to perception here. Make sense? Okay. That's my that's my game yes. plan. Uh, well, that's a four. So... Um, you got nothing. Yeah. You're like, oh, the inscription says, show me wisdom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, another, let's see, another wise thing to do would be like context, right? Like intelligence <laughs> is knowing that a tomato is a fruit and wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. So I'll look around for context. This is a gauntlet, which means it's a series of blows or challenges. We just did that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's possible show me wisdom and the thing was holding a pile of scrolls means that we're supposed to add to the library and like give a scroll of ours, which contains wisdom to the statue and like put it in its hands. So Mm. Cal, you have a bunch of notes in your notebook. But they're not scrolls. Right. But you've written down a lot of wisdom, right? You're an HR manager. Do you have like an old notebook that got filled that you're carrying around with you that you could leave with the statue? I I could put in last week's HR sexual (laughs) harassment lecture. (laughs) Yeah, you want to try it? Yeah, that sure sounds wise. (laughs) Okay, I don't know if it's wise or not. I mean, my wisdom is zero. I'll give it a go. (laughs) Your wisdom is zero. (laughs) Zero wisdom club. (laughs) Cal... Rips out the pages and uh, puts them in the hand. It's wisdom that he doesn't have. It's, wait, let me look at my intelligence score. He, he does have a little bit of intelligence right now. So, yeah, he puts it in the hand. As you do so, a voice comes over from the ceiling. Uh-oh. And it goes, and it's a, it's a you recognize it as the um, stained glass man from earlier. And it goes, not the solution, but this will be handy with my employees. You may pass. And the door opens up. <laughs> I did not do the mess. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> do, 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 do. Invisible's good sometimes. And I just kind of walk out of the room. <laughs> and as you all walk out of the room, you feel another whirlwind and all of your powers return to you. Oh, thank you God. Back in your own, you are back with your own party or own powers. And not a spell slot between us. Yep. (laughs) What are spell slots? (laughs) Uh, Well, guess I can't rely on my devil magic anymore. Well, some of it. Some of it I always have. You can't take that away from me. Is it Cal's turn now, I think? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A D10 D10 and and a D4. Uh, That's a one on the D10 and a four on the D4. Oh my good, you guys are going to get some temp hit points back. <laughs> oh, did we get yep, any temp so... hit points from that last one? No. Nope. Oh, okay. No. We Never screwed mind. up too much. <laughs> That's because the janitor had to come in and reset all the scrolls. Uh, sure. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> She's like, whatever. Yeah, I don't like you, you guys anymore. <laughs> no, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> um, 
you draw an ace of spades. Ooh. And you spin up the wheel and it's a health potion again. Y'all know what that's going to be. And the door opens back up. All right, Claire, Amy ain't going to go first. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I will. It's, yeah, I'm going in. <laughs> hey, that <laughs> saves me from having to push you. <laughs> Doesn't have seen gesture. <laughs> I have, wait, I have Vicious Walkery back. You have temp HP. Uh, I'm going to use Vicious Walkery on that obscene gesture. <laughs> so make a wisdom save. <laughs> I, just, I, I flip you the bird as I walk out. <laughs> 21. I'm yeah, wise that's again. A <laughs> that's a pass. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, this time as you walk in, you walk into the room, and on the wall, there are made out of stained glass again. There's a series of ruins... Like R U N E S, not R U I N S. And they are dancing across the walls and spinning around the room. And there is a dragon face facing you straight across from where you walked in, and a dragon's tail hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> and you want to investigate or perceive or punch each other in the face again if you really <laughs> must. I will investigate. <laughs> we'll attempt to investigate. Oh, yeah, that's well, that's fair. I got a nine because I rolled a three on the dice. <laughs> the ruins on the wall seem very familiar to you. And it takes you a little bit as you're sitting there kind of puzzling them out because you don't want to touch the stained glass. And you realize that one of them looks like the dragon taking what you think is Eldritch Blast to the face. Hmm. Cal steps to the corner of the room. I'm going to ritually cast Comprehend Languages, see if I could understand the runes. It'll take me, yeah, 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Are, are they draconic runes? Yes. Cal can read them then, in case he speaks draconic. Hmm. So Cal, as you draw closer to observe her reading skills, her reading comprehension, <laughs> you notice that you can completely read them. And it does say... Eldritch Blast, light the dragon's fire, and pull the dragon's tail. Fail or prevail? Cal's going to go back to the corner of the room and wait for the 11 minutes for her ritual to complete. <laughs> well, I'll have it for an hour after that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to the... <laughs> Back to like the beginning of the room and just like stare at the, um, at, at the dragon's face because like, it's just like, hmm, I'm going to... Is it like Eldritch Blast the dragon in the face or not Eldritch Blast it? Because I know that's part of it. Um, yeah. So Look, then... The two of us have already done it. You might as well. Eh, sure. <laughs> I, I, I don't wait for the Comprehend Languages. I'm just going to go and Eldritch Blast the dragon in the face then. But I don't know about Pull the Dragon's Tail. I mean, I, I wouldn't know that... Out of character, I, I that was my first intention anyways when I went into the room. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, in character it is too. Just going to pull the Dragon's Tail just for fun. <laughs> so do you eldritch blast first or do you pull the dragon tail first um eldritch blast first then pull the dragon's tail so when you hit it with eldritch blast the door slides up halfway and drops and then when you pull the tail the door stops halfway comes up halfway and stops hmm mm. seems like we have to do it at the same time who here is strong <laughs> oh wait i know looks like cal how about you pull a dragon's tail and I'll shoot it in the face at the same time? You know, you like order at people around. You haven't said please <laughs> once. Please. <laughs> you need to put a cherry on top. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Flipsy the bird again. <laughs> Cal rolls his eyes. <laughs> Love giving obscene gestures. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I guess we work in conjunction because she did put a, a, a cherry on top of a please. Yeah. It and does then look a, like a cherry. And then gave gave a bird. <laughs> okay. So three, two, one. Do we go on then, three or one? Uh on one. Or zero? I'm not gonna say zero. <laughs> 
I'm standing by the there's a door that they're trying to open so like I'm just next to it they haven't noticed me wander here and when they like try to open the door I'm gonna try to like hold the door up if this makes sense so that yeah. when it rises halfway it can't fall all the way back down did you roll a stealth to make sure we couldn't see you <laughs> 21 oh, well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty good <laughs> <laughs> You you guys are very wrapped up in your conversation. Yeah, yep. I only got an 18 there. So what he would have wrote was, try to make a quick getaway, but he didn't get to write that. Exactly. <laughs> All right, you ready now? You done with your notes? Criticizing my notes. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Your Eldritch Blast lights up the room as Cal pulls the dragon's tail, and it's reflected through the dragon's mouth and back out, but it doesn't hit you. It goes up over you, and the door slides completely open. And as you all walk through, you feel ten more hit points. You feel very energetic. Again, that burst of healing. It would have looked like I just waited for the door to open and walked through. <laughs> Wait, what? when did you get here? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I should have like five more. <laughs> um, okay, who we are. So for this one, instead of a D10, um, whoever's rolling, if you can just roll two D4. So we're down to the final four cards. Eva. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so four and four. All right, you get potions up again. And this time the door opens. And you can kind of hear what sounds like a crowd echoing from it. Oh, Lord of Hail, there's a crowd. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go in. Stealth check? As I just kind of like casually walk in, like like there's the main entrance, the WWE star, and then no one notices the janitor just like fixing stuff behind them. Perfect. Wow. 25. Oh, wow. You are very casual, so casual that you almost lose track of yourself and your ruse. You're like, yes, I am the janitor. <laughs> I start cleaning something. <laughs> oh, He's very great. cocky about their casualness. <laughs> you don't notice. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're probably all dro- like, <laughs> yeah, she probably made a bit of an entrance. I mean, she walked in casually, but like confidently. <laughs> you don't know. You can't see her either. No, you just no, think I, as a janitor. I, Ava did walk in very confidently. Oh. Cal, do you have a special way you're walking in? Nope. Okay, you stroll in, the door shuts behind you, and you all are in what looks like an ice cream shop. And there are small children made out of stained glass again, and their giggles sound like tinkles, and they are demanding ice cream from the ice cream bar you are standing behind. All right, guys. This is very important. We have a bad reputation with children, so be very careful of what you do. Oh, great. I have a new nightmare now. What? Sweets and children? Oh, boy. <laughs> <clears throat> Say, little one, what makes you scream? Would it be this? She flares up her, she flares out her wings and grins at, the, at it. <laughs> the, the small stained glass children kind of look at you and then a couple of them start crying but instead of tears it's like shards of glass and they hit the floor and shatter and then some of the others in the back are saying ice cream ice cream we scream for ice cream <clears throat> makes children cry even though I warned beforehand <laughs> now that's the sound I like to hear <laughs> Claire, perception check or animal handling? Whatever one you want. <laughs> Children are not... Well, I guess they kind of are like animals. <laughs> uh, it's a five on the dice. I could add numbers to that. <laughs> but... Okay. All right. I will. <laughs> I guess this is a perception check because children's aren't animals. Seven? The stained glass dragon that has returned to its spot on your shoulder seems to be shaking against you. And you're not sure if it's in excitement or fear. 
I offer it a lockpick because I really did not come prepared with sand to feed this thing. <laughs> Is it? Oh, like I know where I... you are now because I can hear the glass shaking against your neck. <laughs> Is it like when a cat is looking at a cucumber and you like distract it and it jumps? Or is it like uh, when a cat's looking at a bird and you really can't, you could like move the cat and the head stays in the same position, you know? The second one. So the dragon is very focused oh. towards the children and the ice cream huh. counter. Dragon wants to eat children. Dragon <laughs> wants ice cream. I'm going to go with the second. Dragon wants ice cream. So I'm going to take the dragon and I'm going to like, Set it down on the ground. We like go eat ice cream. We're, like pushing at its butt a little bit. Go, go. It curls around your boot and is refusing to move, but is still staring in that direction. Are hmm. you shy? Wait, uh, it's just ice cream. Okay. Um. Maybe it's scared. I put it back on my shoulder, and I'm gonna stealth behind the counter and get it some ice cream. <laughs> okay. Roll for stealth. <laughs> Okay. 15? I think that's the lowest one for you for stealth. <laughs> yep. At the right time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm a need. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> Kids are going to kill us. Save. <laughs> that's a two on the dice, so seven. From the ice cream bins, all the ice cream bursts forward and wraps itself around your legs. Yeah, I was not expecting that. It would. It really would. <laughs> <laughs> and you are now surrounded by ice cream that is oozing. Roll for initiative, please. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I'm going to look at Cal and say, see, sweets and children are, are not evil. They're good. And good things are too good. <laughs> are not good. <laughs> Not when you scare the shit out of them. 21. I got a one. <laughs> uh, nine total. Okay, so the order is going to be Claire, our monster, Ava, and then Cal. The first thing I'm going to do is use my action on a skill check. I think I can do this. I think this is allowed, right? I don't know. Anyway. Okay. I'm going to use my deception skill, and I'm going to try to say, do you want ice cream? Cream. Uh, and that's, um, I'm like serving them ice cream because I look like a, I'm wearing a worker's garb. You know, I got like a, I'm going to serve them ice cream. And that's a 17 on deception. And I offer, um, like I, I've got a scoop in my hand and I offer to scoop the ice cream that's attacking me for the children. You want the children to swarm this thing? <laughs> sure. And to eat it. Yeah, it's delicious. I, what was that? I don't know. Anyway, so, yeah. That was the a word. Chil <laughs> the, the children don't move. They seem to be frozen. Oh, I get it. Ice cream frozen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the children, like, have become actual stained glass. Like, they don't look like they're moving anymore at all. Okay. Yes. All right. So it looks like they've almost been deactivated now that you are surrounded by this ooze. Mm, is my glass dragon deactivated? No, it is up on your head. Do you wear a hat or do you just have your hair? Depends. Uh, for plumbing, I think I just have like a cap on. In old timey times, everybody always wore hats. But we're not in old timey times. So we're just pretending we are. But back in the day, you wouldn't be caught dead outside without a hat. Um, so I'm going to say I have a hat on, like a cap. It's hiding under your hat. Okay. So it's hiding. And so the ice cream You can tell thing. for sure it's terrified. Your little stained glass dragon is terrified. Okay. I'm going to do a throw. I'm going to throw the stained glass dragon back to where we came from. It can fly. So as long as I get it in the air and don't like punt it into the ground then I should be okay. <laughs> so I'm going to try to throw it back to the entrance so that I can freely attack this thing and not worry about shattering my stained glass dragon. Also, uh, this okay. is why I don't have familiars. Um. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> All right, so I'd like to roll and then add my dex just like it's a thrown object. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so it's a 15 on the dice. I've got a plus three dexterity, so that's like an 18 to get the dragon back to the door. It it You... Throw it up in the air, it catches your drift, and it flies over to the door. It looks very worried for you, but it has stopped shaking, at least, in complete fear. All right, that's my turn. That ends it. 
Okay, next we have, oh, next we have me. I forgot. Sometimes I forget what I play. Um, the, does a 19 hit you? Absolutely. So you are going to take two points of bludgeoning damage as the mint chip version, mint chip version of the ice cream pile that has consumed your legs pops up and smacks you real hard. Down to 49. That'll be the ooze's turn. We are on to Ava. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I'm going to bonus action um, Hexblades curse it. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to curse it. I'm going to say, oh, sweet things. Yeah, you're, you're not allowed to be sweet anymore. You know what? You're going to be sour by the time I finish with you. And I'm going to, uh... oh, wait, I can help. I can Hexblades curse. And, um, yeah, I'll Eldritch Blast it. <laughs> so. All righty, go ahead, roll the hit. Oh, yeah, that's not very good. My modifier is a plus five. Uh, it's 14. It hits. Oh, okay. Um, that's 1d10 damage. That's eight points of forest damage to the ice cream monster. Oh, yeah, plus my proficiency bonus, plus two. Yeah, All so it's 10 points. Sweet. And uh, I, it takes... Yeah. When you when you curse it, is it like visual magic? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. Like, it's it's like... It's a curse, like you point at it or something like that, or like just say I curse you and then it gets cursed. Like I, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's not. It's not a spell. Okay, I was just curious if there was any special looks for it. Uh, you hit it. Is that all you're gonna do on your turn? Uh, I'll move. I'll move uh, backward if I can behind an ice cream counter. I'm not sure if I can. You can move against the wall. Yeah, I guess I'll just move against the wall. Okay, Cal, you're up. Cal's going to say, hey, guys, I'll be back. I gotta go take a poo. (laughs) (laughs) No one's gonna be like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Don't do it here. (laughs) (laughs) He he, he runs uh, behind uh, the obviously not real children and uh, hides and then jumps, jumps out. He has done a quick change. He is now in all blue, except he has a red cape, red undies on the outside, and a big red C on his chest. And he says, Never fear, Super Crud is here. (laughs) Oh, this is excellent. (laughs) And he flies up to the monster and uses his last key point to do the flurry of blows. <laughs> All right, he rolled a hit. I did three times. I got a, let, let the lowest I got was a 16 to hit. Okay, they all hit. And one of them was a natural 20. So that's going to be damage. 24 points of damage to the gooey, gooey monster. All righty. He is, the ice cream is slightly, it's a quarter of it is melted on the bottom. From your hits. Don't leak on my boots, you you bad monster. <laughs> All right, does that conclude your turn? Yep. Okay, Claire, you are up. Cutting action, reading, I've never read the rogue stuff before, says that I can take a bonus action on each of my turns in combat. This action can be used only to take dash, disengage, or hide. So I'm going to... I mean, if I, I'm in melee range, so if I disengage, I can get away and then hide next turn? Yes. Okay. I think that's how that works. Because hiding while being entangled with a, a stained glass ooze doesn't really make sense, unless I hide in it. Is it completely opaque? It's ice cream. It's ice it's cream. It's literally ice cream. Can I hide in it? You can hide behind me. I want to dive into the Citizen. ooze. Citizen? I want to dive into the ice cream and hide in it. Yeah. Why do my characters keep dying? Yeah. Let's hide in the ice cream. Yeah. (laughs) So for those listening at home, uh, the DM has the face of, I guess that'll work. (laughs) It's a more WTF look, but. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, um, 
I'm not. I'm. I'm reading. I, I don't think it'll stop you. No, I mean you can hide and hide in the ice cream. If you guys, as a listener, have never been to the Museum of Ice Cream, there's this like ball pit full of sprinkles at the end, and this is what I'm picturing. There's like a slide, and you can slide down into the ball pit of sprinkles, and it feels like you're in ice cream, and I'm I'm swimming in it. I but stained glass, so it's like little sharp sprinkles. Yes. Okay. Um, I just hope you don't get cold damage while inside. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I, I'm definitely eating it too, by the way, DM. <laughs> That's your prerogative. <laughs> okay. um, all of your so attacks guess... will be scooping out ice cream and eating them. <laughs> um, that's a 19 hide. Yep. It does not have a great perception. You burrow further in. And what what flavor are you hiding in? We have mint chips so far. And the rest are up to whatever you want the flavors to be. Ooh, Superman. There's no Superman here. There's super crud. Whoa. <laughs> super crud flavored ice cream. I'm sorry. <laughs> you trying to get us sued? <laughs> no, no, don't come for us. Okay. Uh, super <laughs> crud flavored ice cream. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds yummy. Tastes like crud. <laughs> I dive into the ice cream and I reach into my pocket and I take out my short sword. That's a 17 to hit. It hits. And then 2d6 plus 3 damage because of the sneak attack. Okay. 13 damage. Alrighty. Now, when you're doing this damage and you're hitting it with the short sword, mm. are you just cutting off chunks of ice cream and eating them? Yes. <laughs> you know, knives are a good way to carve ice cream. It's true. <laughs> so as you're eating the super crud ice cream. <laughs> Tastes like chicken. <laughs> and carving a path through <laughs> Ice, ice cream you get the sense that it's looking real rough and to everyone on the outside even more is melting on the bottom and uh, <laughs> the, the the ooze is I, it's just, it's just, this is hilarious um, my brain is just broken um, success the ooze <laughs> didn't expect us to eat your enemy <laughs> <laughs> Eat the rich. <laughs> oh, tastes like crap. The, the mint ice cream raises back up and is going to take a swing at crud. And it rolled a nat 20. So, unless you have something that can void that. Uh, and then you're you know, going to. I don't take... have any more key points. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at you. <laughs> I'm looking back. I'm like, what? I, again, I, no one has explained fancy and magic to me. I don't understand. You can just do it over and over, right? <laughs> and you're going to take 15 points of damage. Ooh. And that'll be its turn. That would have almost killed you if it weren't for those temporary hit points. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Okay, whose turn? And it is now Ava's turn. My turn. Okay, Um. yeah, I am going to... Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'm also going to start carving it up. I'm going to go to it, draw my golden saber, and um, just like hack and slash. I'm going to attack it with my saber. Okay. I think I, I would get sneak attack. Oh, that's true. So I got a, to hit, I get a 17. Yep, that hits. And for damage, I do so 1d8 plus 1d6 with my dex. Oh, I rolled max damage on that. So then 8 plus, um, okay, what would it be? 8 plus 4, 12 plus um, 1, 13 points of damage from me as well. All righty. As you slash it and cut chunks off, you start to see bits and pieces of Claire in there also <laughs> eating and chunking. And super crud, you know that this thing is on the verge of collapse just because it's getting cut up from the outside and cut up from the inside so its structural integrity is not great and it is your turn super crud digs into his underwear pulls out a torch <laughs> and lights it and puts it to the monster to melt it completely i'm not even going to say roll the hit because it's hanging still <laughs> it lights up in a burst of flame and I am going to need deck saves from everybody. I, I accept this. I will also accept disadvantage on this because I am inside it. <laughs> yeah, Claire, you are going to have disadvantage. 23 from Super Crud. Nine. <laughs> disadvantage. Ten. <laughs> um, it is, okay, so Claire and Ava, 
You take... Oh, I need another one. 13 points of damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm down to 36. Started at 17. And that's yeah, why you don't let two. your monsters fart. <laughs> yeah, don't let them fart. Stop them from farting. Buy our monster fart plugs today. Yeah. D do you know nothing <laughs> about fire safety? I mean, you should write that in your notes about yourself. I mean, wait till allies are clear of flames. Okay, I'm going to write it for you. Does not wait until allies are clear of flames before before burning them. <laughs> what are you talking about, citizen? I don't take notes. I save people. Uh-huh. Sure, sure, super crud. <laughs> and with Wait that, the door clicks back open. All right, citizens. Try to be safe. And if you ever need me again, just scream bloody murder. And he's... <laughs> And he hides again and changes back and Cal comes up. Uh, ten pounds lighter. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd like to roll a perception check myself. DM, is that okay if I do that? Yeah. Okay, I don't... Are you... What are... No, uh, that's like a 13. Do I notice that Cal and Supercut are the same person? That's good. Deception? Deception? With... And I, I'll get... How long has um, Cal and Supercrud... How long has Cal been super crudding around? Oh, a long time. So then I will give you advantage because you're pretty skilled at hiding it if you've been doing it for a long time. Okay, well, I got a minus one in deception, so that's only going to be a 17. And remind me what you rolled again. 13. So you, you, you get like the thought kind of occurs to you and you go, nah, it can't <laughs> be the same person. He really looks like he had to poop. <laughs> <laughs> glasses <laughs> just like yeah like Avarice doesn't know for sure but she suspects it very much <laughs> she has her suspicions everybody always does <laughs> she's not gonna out him though she's just gonna be sassy toward him <laughs> alrighty the door is open and the ice cream melts away and the stained glass children fold up into the floor what? I was definitely going to give them some ice cream. Okay, how's my dragon, or the stained glass dragon that is accompanying me today, formerly known as the artist known as? Okay, um, but like, does that thing still look terrified? I guess, is there any ice cream left? It's all melted on the floor. Mm. Um, But the dragon is kind of hovering near you, try and it seems like it's trying to land again on your shoulder, but it seems a lot more relaxed. So I've got Ava, who's scared of doors. <laughs> I've got no, a stained glass, <laughs> a stained glass dragon who's scared of ice cream, and I've got everybody else is stronger than me here. Literally, you all have magic <laughs> that I don't know what spell slots are. You can just blow stuff up at any time, and it, like I, I set the dragon on the melted ice cream, and I sit down and I give it a chat really loudly so that Ava can hear me, and I'm like, look, look, you need to have a bit more courage, because. The world is a scary place, but you're strong. You can take it. And Talks I guess to I people indirectly up. through dragons. <laughs> I spoon up a little bit of the ice cream so that the stained glass dragon can slurp it if it wants. The stained glass dragon kind of shakes and tinkle, like does its little tingling, and it seems a little in like teenager standoffish, ish. But it does kind of lick at the ice cream and you watch as the ice cream like slides down its throat and what fl did you give it super crud flavor absolutely so the reds <laughs> and the blues of the ice cream intermingle with its different colors and changes the colors that shine through it on its different scales as the ice cream works its way through hmm. okay I i'm gonna look at ava just kind of sorry at claire and just kind of like hmm and and then she's gonna go over to a child and push it <laughs> like kind of like resisting because it feels like it burns a bit but she's just like i can't resist pushing this child over <laughs> but they went down to the floor <laughs> they, They're yeah gone. they folded into the floor are you pushing on the floor <laughs> oh never mind maybe like a stained glass stool a uh, ice cream countertop stool uh yeah i guess so oh yeah i'll, I'll knock a stool over <laughs> <laughs> hey, she can handle a stool <laughs> do you just walk up and like kick it yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Damage is personal property. <laughs> I, 
have you you kick it it falls over it cracks it shatters and the door is still open <laughs> good and then i just look at it for a second and then, and then i walk out <laughs> yeah she walked through the door first i follow and hide <laughs> Hey, I mean, I've, I've been doing that this past couple times, walking through it first, because she doesn't really care anymore. True. <laughs> yep. There is one card left on the stand. I'll pick it up. <laughs> and throw and it in the waste basket. Yeah, I was going to do that. And who is spinning the wheel? Is anyone going to spin the wheel? I could just do both. <laughs> okay, roll me a d4. Just one d4? Okay, yeah. Um, one. So much for health. Okay. Y'all didn't want to spin the wheel. <laughs> you all did get the ten he- temporary HPs added from that last spin. Good, because I um, lost 15. This, uh, the, the X comes back up. And Ava, you know that you are about to lose all your magic mm. when you walk through that door. And the door slides open. She just sighs. <sighs> Not again. <laughs> she just whispers that under her breath, but then just walks, just shakes her head and just walks in. Talks under her breath. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you all follow in? Mm-hmm. All right. You are in the middle of a boxing ring. And across the wall, across from where you entered, it says... A good old-fashioned fist fight. <laughs> Knock each other out to continue to the next room. <laughs> hey, guys, can we just sit down for an hour? You know, take a quick <laughs> break. Yeah, sure. Let, let's do that. I, I think that would be a great idea. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yeah? Again, I don't understand what short rests are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a warlock. I thrive on short rests. <laughs> okay. We take a short rest and... Do you play patty cake? Do you play card games? Do you talk? Anything interesting that you want to try during your break? Anything you need to do? And jot notes. Wipe the ice cream off. Oh, wait, I have prestidigitation. I'll prestidigitate the ice cream off of me. Just be like, Ugh. Uh, No, she Gross. said no magic. You don't oh, have magic. I, I try to prestidigitate myself, and then I, I, I don't. I'm just like, ah, oh, Lord, now I have to clean myself manually. <sighs> So then she just spends the hour just cl- just cleaning it off her feathers. She she takes out some of her feathers to clean it off her own feathers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I take out a small notebook that has a list of first and last names on it. And I just am looking at it for a little bit. And I cross out like the eighth one. I, I, w- I want to sneak a peek over her shoulder. I did it stealthily. S- oh, okay. So then I'm going to try to perceive. That's a 19 on stealth. say... 18 on perception, so I don't see that you did that. I put the, the list of names back in my back pocket. Mm. All righty. You guys take your hour break. I get my keys back. There. I get my keys back. <laughs> <laughs> N- nothing else happens. The room still says the same thing. A good old-fashioned fist fight. And there are two spots in the ring that say player one and player two. And the instructions are still there. I stand in the player two spot, and I'd like to prepare a reaction. Okay. <laughs> My reaction is a deception check. Like, I want to I wanna do a, a... You ever seen someone punch someone, and then the second person flings themselves backwards across the stage? I want to prepare oh, yes. that. Like, you have to be ready for it. You can't just... Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that makes sense. All right, who is our other... I, I want to fight Cal, but... Then you better win <laughs> against... Claire. Fair enough. Challenge accepted. <laughs> I'll be player one. <laughs> As you stand on the player one spot, you hear, ready, fight. My body starts moving limberly like a loading screen or like a mortal. Have you ever played a fighting game and then like do this repeated like dun, 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 moving my fist up and down, moving my shoulders up and down. I don't know why my hips are jiggling, but they are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, um, not so much fancy stuff. I know that I don't have my magic, so I'll just take out my saber and attack. Really? Wow, a saber (laughs) in a boxing match? All right. I'm gonna punch you. 
<laughs> Screw that. I was ready to take a dive. You're going to knife fight me? You brought a knife fight to this fist? No. Yeah. yeah. So as you pull out your saber, the room lights up and it disappears. Dang oh, right. okay. <laughs> and the words on the wall that say good old fashioned fist fight flash green uh, as if to say good old fashioned fist fight. Ah, uh, great. All right. Well, and then I, I, uh, I, I go, I just like put my hands up then and then I go in for the, for the punch. Yeah, so as your rapier was being teleported out of your hands, a fist was coming at you. <laughs> I'm going to roll punch hit. you. Yeah, so roll the hit. So it's a 22 to hit. Wait, but don't, don't we, like, do zero damage to each other? Because, like... <laughs> four damage. Yeah, you have, like, 46 at least hit points, so I deal four damage to you. But I'd like to think your nose bleeds. Hmm... <sighs> Oh, wait, are rogues proficient on arm strikes? I guess we are. Oh, right. It's a rogue versus rogue, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And one arm strike is like 1d4 minus strength, right? Or plus strength, minus strength in our cases. Oh, gosh. Let me reroll that. So <laughs> it's two damage. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to hex blades curse her, but what that doesn't heck? work, right? Just punch no, it doesn't me work. And I'll go flying. You don't have magic. Yeah, I'll, Has I'll, to do I'll a punch fist her. fight, doing a slap fight instead. <laughs> I, I mean, sure, yeah. My, my my nose does bleed. You, you, you clock me in the face, and you see black blood, black ichor flowing out of it. And she just like she just like wipes it off, looks at you, and grins with like um those evil red eyes of hers. And she's gonna try to punch you back. That's a total. It's a whopping total of one damage. <laughs> Can I do a deception check? <laughs> Yes. Okay. My deception check is plus four, so that's an eleven. Um, As I fling roll myself perception, the, yeah. Ava, and I will roll as well for the room. And perception. I will roll for the, the uh, guy roll, who, yes. who who does the rules. Oh my gosh! Your HR guy is there, and you're fist fighting. Cal got a twenty to two to see if this is a flop. <laughs> Uh, I got a five. I believe it. <laughs> okay, so, so Claire goes flying into the ropes and hits the ground, flopping. <laughs> Cal, you can tell that she's like staring off to the side, kind of like you see her eyes open for a second, and so you know it's not what's up. Oh, Cal stares Ava, right you... into her eyes. <laughs> I close them. <laughs> <laughs> Ava, you're convinced you've killed her <laughs> well yeah knocked her out at least because like i'm not, not going to kill someone with a punch <laughs> right um it's just like all right now next person throws <laughs> on, fight step up here. to <laughs> get, as get laying, done with it <laughs> as you're laying on the floor claire the room clicks and a door opens because your deception has tricked the room <laughs> and all of you feel as you the door opens, a rush as your hit points are refilled from those. Te- so like hit points plus the temporary hit points refilled to the top. Holy cow. Okay. I'm at 56 out of 17. Okay, that means 55 out of 17. I'm going to be at 56 15. as well. Or 57. Yeah. I feel like jumping off buildings. Let's say that. <laughs> I All right. I well, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm still laying on the ground for a few seconds, you know? Mm. <laughs> Cal goes over, whispers in your ear. We know you flopped. Just get up. Ah, <laughs> oh, smelling salts. Ah, oh, I smell bad. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, um, yeah, that's what happens when you punch a fiend. Fiend will punch back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she believed it. Ava believed it. <laughs> I, yep. The sigh was in character. <laughs> Did not see the obvious flop maneuver. Thinks she's the toughest person in the room. She needs some self-esteem. Don't tell her that. <laughs> oh, these are my notes. You can't hear this. Yeah. Don't put that in your review. Don't put that in your review. At review. Oh, it has to be. <laughs> She'll find out later. And besides, you can't hear my reviews. <laughs> All right, we go through the door. 
Alrighty, as you walk in, instead of the drawing room, which you've come accustomed to seeing, you are instead faced with what looks almost like a throne room. And sitting on the throne in front of you, made of stained glass, is the stained glass man. And he is slow clapping as you walk in. And he says, congratulations, you've won. Thanks. (laughs) (sighs) So, who runs this thing? Well, I do, of course. Asked ah. obvious questions. Still. Hmm, I-, I was thinking that you were just, like, the face of the operation. Uh, actually, I- I'm gonna do an insight check while I say that. Okay. Insight is a natural one plus two is a three. <laughs> <laughs> and I also fail because he has a pretty face. Can't help it. Cal don't care, Does so... Have a- Cal, if you do an insight check, I will give you advantage. Okay. I mean, I can't say no to that. Insight is a pl- uh, no. Yeah. No, that's intimidation. Uh, insight, insight. Oh, it's a plus. F- Holy crap. Okay. That's going to be a 23. You hear from the little stained glass dragon around Claire's shoulders. It's whispering and tinkles, but you understand that it's draconic. And it's saying, large dragon, danger, much danger. It's not shaking, but it's trying to subtly warn you guys. And it's kind of growling, but instead of actual growls, it's just deeper tinkles. (laughs) (laughs) I hate that I made this thing glass. (laughs) Such a weird word. It sounds like they're tinkling all over the floor. Yeah, just uh, tinkling everywhere (laughs) around the room. (laughs) So you can gather that the man in front of you is, in fact, a full-grown stained glass dragon. Cal says in Dragonese, (laughs) so uh, are you going to eat us? Oh, wait. The man kind of looks at you. And cocks his head and he talks back in Dragonese and says, No, I my horde is not you for consumption. My horde is your joy of completing my challenges. And that's how I grow more powerful. And also, I was just, quite frankly, bored. So I wanted to sow some chaos. Do I need to eat you? Are you going to try to stop me? Well, why is your little buddy there warning me against you? Oh, the... Sometimes my creations are not cooperative, per se. He's been looking for a new owner, and he is perhaps slightly worried that I might keep him here and banish you. I don't actually eat the people, though, and his little brain, from what I could make, he does think I do. So I won't eat you unless, I mean, unless you're itching for a fight. Occasionally, that is the prize for some of these people. They want to fight a dragon for some reason. No, I don't want to fight you, so we just collect our prizes and go? Yes. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, by the way, I didn't want to interrupt y'all, but as, as soon as Cal started talking a different language, I cast Comprehend Language is not as a ritual. So that's so why I, I could hear on all that. Okay. I understand yep, So you that. got all that. Uh, you yeah. don't have a spell slot. Yeah, I do, because we took a short rest. Oh, did you get some back? Yeah, I I got my spell slot back. (laughs) Oh. See, I wanted wanted it since if I had to fight you, I had all my flurry blows. And you would have went down and, like, around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. So, yes, Ava, you did catch all of that. Um, he claps his hands and he says out loud and common now. He says, of course, of course, your prizes. Um, so he claps his hands and in front of him are three boxes. One of them holds a ring of protection. One of them holds an abacus. And the last one is empty. And he looks at it and he taps his fingers on it. And he says, power and influence are what drive you. Have you thought of an item, or would you rather I surprise you? Uh, hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to think now. Uh, Finally you know thinking. 
I well, know. Why don't you go ahead and, p- and put that halfling punnet in my charge? And the stained oh, glass dragon. Her? <laughs> huh? And the stained glass dragon. <laughs> uh... The, the the small one i mean i oh yeah like uh, that, that that's what um that's what you would want right claire the sting glass dragon this would draw one? attention to me i don't want it <laughs> but it doesn't oh. like its creator so like you should take it <laughs> all right i mean i i could have i could go for another dragon so i mean if it, if it wants to be with me it can but yeah i, I want the halfling mother of shoulder sized dragons you want the halflings <laughs> you're talking about that halfling in the cave yeah <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he looks at you and he goes, the halfling, she's just a temporary employee. She'll be released when I move on to another area. Are you sure that's what you want? Oh, I suppose if she'll be released, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's what I was going to do anyways. Just release her back into the world. You know, I, for, I have my own reasons. But um, Cal crosses yeah, I, out, I guess... wants to own people. <laughs> I, I guess surprise me surprise you okay and he pulls a curtain in front of the box and he sticks his hands in and he seems to be messing around and you smell what you smell melting metal and you hear glass clacking across each other and then when he pulls it back there's a stained glass pyramid and he hands it to you and he says now i don't do this often but you all were extremely entertaining this afternoon um, I suppose I'll owe you a favor, and this will show my favor that I like you. So if you come across any of my enemies, perhaps, or anyone who happens to like me, it'll help you out a little bit. Hmm. All right. Well, how do we know who's your enemy and who would like you? Is there a, are there particular groups or anything that are your enemies? Oh, but that would not be allowing chaos to reign if I told you that. You will have to find out on your own. Fair enough. Now, well, f- for, um, he, s- he said that this punnet is a temporary employee. Did she want to be bound and gagged and stuff? Is that part of the contract? <laughs> that might be her thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. Some people are into it. It doesn't work sometimes in ale. It has the opposite effect. <laughs> I don't think... She was quite expecting herself to get that job, but based on her track record of her treatment of employees, I think she will, she will find this experiment experience enlightening. Now I do have a new group coming in unless you need anything else from me. So no crimes were committed here. She winks at, Ava winks at the, at the stained glass man who's a dragon. (laughs) He winks back. (laughs) Enjoy your psychological feast. <laughs> and an exit door pops up and it says exit in stained glass on the top and it's glowing. Yeah, I guess we, we exit. <laughs> Ava first. Sure. <laughs> yes. Can I have a, I, I've got a, as a, my class, I've got to have daggers. From this experience, can I have a stained glass dagger? Like the blade is sharp but sturdy stained glass. Yeah, sweet. Yes. You don't want your instrument instead. Well, I mean, like, I murdered ice cream, so I want to take some super crud ice cream dagger with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. And then the little stained glass gr- dragon. Does it still follow Claire? Want to be with Claire? Or um, it, it's on Claire's shoulder. I will say, as the DM, whoever wants to take it. Yes, please. <laughs> Hi, the player. I would love it. <laughs> I just kind of like blow it off. Uh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> it flies over to you and snuggles next to your pseudo dragon. And you now have two dragons to keep track of. Do you step through the glowing door? <laughs> yes, I do. Watch out. That little bastard bites. <laughs> As you step through, you find yourself in a stained glass tube slide and you get the feeling that you're twisting around from the top of the giant skyscraper and the light is filtering through in different colors and it's very psychedelic and very cool and you are deposited back at the bottom with your winnings. Nice. Yay. Today we have been joined by Cal. I was Ava twice and I can say I did not like it, but (laughs) she has grown.
this episode. <laughs> I will admit that. And that will be in the report. <laughs> Aw. Ava. Well, no. It was interesting being a human, but... Uh, I mean, I don't know, kind of like being a fiend and, you know, charming people and yeah, all that kind of stuff. Now I got the favor of two dragons. Well, what's with dragons and devils? <laughs> and Claire. She's gone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello. Welcome to the post-episode promotion swap. This is when we do a promotion swap with another podcast. If you've got a podcast, let us know. We'd love to do a promotion swap with you. Here's this week's. The Heart Pyre is a community-driven, choose-your-own-adventure narrative podcast that updates every two weeks. After each episode, three paths on which the story could continue on are presented, and the listeners can vote for which path they prefer. Follow Rena after she finds her hometown burned to the ground. On her journey to find out the truth, she meets four companions who each have their own mysteries to uncover. Check out The Heart Pyre. P-Y-R-E.